Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge. And we haven't done a Q&A in quite a while. Now, I usually do Q&As as like a live video. I have done that in the past, but sometimes I can feel pretty um, disorganized. So I put out a question box on Instagram and I put up questions on um, the YouTube channel and I ended up getting a lot of questions this time around, which is really fun. Um, so I just hit 7k this week, which was amazing. Um, it is also my three year anniversary on booktube, which is crazy. I've been making videos since April of 2018 and now we're here. We've been through a lot. And I'm super, super excited for where we're going to go and what's coming up next. And it's just going to be amazing. I mean, it's going to be great. So first things first, though, I didn't know where to put this information or like where to share it. Um, so if you're not interested in audiobooks, you can go ahead and skip to this time and I'll get to the questions but I was recently asked to review a new audible like not audible a new um audiobook platform and I'm not doing an ad for them but like I kind of am because I'm kind of obsessed and so I'm going to explain all that and talk about it but if you're just here for the Q&A you can just skip to this time and I'll start with all the questions but I'm so excited about this and I know a lot of you do read audiobooks you listen to audiobooks um and this app like now's the time to get in on it because i don't know how it could sustain what it's doing right now so okay i was approached by someone from the pr team for any play fm they are you know they're an audiobook provider um they work with uh, audible audiobook distributors and publishers um, to be able to have the options that they do. Um, I actually asked Jessen to ask Juliet, who is an author, um, because some of her books are on this app. Um, and she explained that she sells, you know, she sold the right to her books. The publisher decides where these things get put and everything. So anyway, I got approached to do this and they offered me a three month free trial with them to test it out and see what I feel about it. And the only thing they asked for in exchange is if I liked it to post a picture about it and to leave a review. So that's all that they asked me to do. I started looking into this app and it just seemed good, too good to be true. So I told a few of my friends about it. I was like, hey, help me test this out. Help me check it out because I'm, I low-key think that this could be ready for it, the next Audible Escape. Okay. It's not meant solely for romance, but when I started digging into the parts of it that are romance books, I just kept finding more and more and more. And I have about... 40 50 books on my like saved playlist right now that I just can't believe some of them are brand new I'm currently listening to wild child that just came out three days ago I'm listening to wild child on it right now um, I have found so many authors there's a ton of historical authors there's Eloisa James Lorraine Heath um, Julia Quinn um, so many more are on this app and it is $9.99 a month or you can purchase for quarterly or yearly from them. Now, there is no limit to how many you can listen to, okay? It doesn't have everything. You'll notice that, you know, it's not like Audible where it has every audio book ever created. There are some um, limitations to them, but they've already doubled how many audiobooks they had in just the past few months. So I only expect that the more people that sign up, the more money they have to work with, that they'll be able to get more. But to me, the fact that it's unlimited listens, like y'all, we know how hard that is to find. Like it just doesn't happen. And so I'm so excited about it. Like I'm so pumped because so far I'm finding very few drawbacks. I don't know if that will last. That's my, that's my point. That's why I don't want to wait because you know, I know that like Audible Escape, it couldn't sustain itself. Offering people free use of this, you know, library of books it's crazy but there's so many options like I'm not going to like list everything but I will tell you some of the drawbacks about it because there are a few things that aren't 
great. Um, and the great thing is though is they're updating all the time. I have heard that the uh, the AO, the iOS version is working better because it's been around longer than the Android version has. Um, I've noticed a couple quirks with mine. Sometimes you need to like reload it, but honestly, like I don't care. Um, something that might be a major drawback for some of you, currently the speed only goes up to 1.75, which I know as soon as I said that a bunch of you just boop, shut out because a lot of my friends listen at 2.5 or faster, so I, I understand. It works for me because I usually listen to books from 1.5 to 1.8, so 1.75 is like perfect for me, but I did put it in my review. I was like, you're gonna have to speed up the speed. Like if you really want some of the avid readers to get a hold of your app, you're gonna have to up that. Um... Yeah, I, okay, I don't want to talk about this forever longer, but you'll probably see me post some more about it on Instagram because I want people to hear about this app and I want you to get on, on it. Well, you can, if you want to, it does have a seven day free trial, just like Audible would. Um, again, I think the best way to look for books is to actually go author specific. Personally, I hope they work on the search interface. Um, when you log into it, you'll see that, um, it has like different categories listed and you can search by genre, but it doesn't show you every book under that genre. However, if you type in an author, like you put in Sierra Simone or you type in Nikki Sloan or Katie Robert, like if you type in the authors you're looking for, I think it's much easier to find stuff. So it doesn't have a great browsing feature if you're just wanting to mindlessly scroll and see what you want. But if you, like, I just pulled up my Goodreads of all the books I want to read, and I just started typing in authors, and I was shocked at how many I was finding, specifically as a romance reader. They also have a lot of the other genres. There's lots of YA fantasy. There's a lot of high fantasy. Um, there's, you know, all the other kind of genres as well. But I was worried about what the romance representation would be within the app, and it's pretty great. So, okay, enough talking about that. We're here for the Q&A. But I had to just brag on this app because, number one, I felt really honored that I got reached out to. But when my free time is up, I'm definitely buying this for a whole year. Like, I'll pay for the yearly membership because I want to get my price locked in. I don't know if they'll have to raise their prices. I don't know what changes might come if they can't sustain this. But I want it because between having some Audible credits saved up, having this app in my library, there isn't an audiobook around that I won't be able to have access to. And that makes me so freaking excited, you don't even know. Okay, so let's get into the questions. Um, usually when I do this, I kind of separate the questions based on like group, but I didn't today. I just literally took the questions you guys sent and I plugged them onto a page to talk about it. So we're just gonna go through these questions. We'll get through all of them or until I'm too tired to talk anymore. I wonder which one of those will come first, but we'll get going. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions. It's always funny to me to do like a Q and A about myself because I'm like, wow, people, I mean, people wanna know what I think, which I guess shouldn't be a surprise since that's what people do is watch me record things. But okay, here we go. Oh, snap. Okay, okay. So the first question, and a lot of you asked me this because I've been mentioning this in a few videos recently about how I learned how to find the free books on Amazon. Um, I found a way to do an advanced search that lets you look. So first thing I'll say, you want to do this on the desktop. I will put a screenshot of what you need to put in, but you want to do this on the desktop go to Kindle Books, and in the top search bar, there will be something that says Advanced Search, and you'll click on that. Then you'll want to go to, you'll type in Romance, if you're going to look for Romance. So I type in Romance into the like search bar, and then you sort it by low to high price point, and then you hit Search. So then when you start going through them, number one, it will mix in some books that actually cost something because that's just what the algorithm, like that's what people have paid to have their books placed in places. But if you'll look at what the ebook price is, you'll notice that the $0 priced books will show up first. So I check this like a couple times a week. You'll see a lot of books stay the same. Like the first couple times I checked, 
I went in deep, you know, like I went through five, 10, 15 pages and I found 20 books that I wanted. And then the next time I did it, a lot of the books were the same. So I find fewer and fewer. So um, maybe you don't need to do it once or twice a week like me, but sometimes there'll be those sales that happen and you'll get a great book and it'll only be nothing. Like it'll be zero dollars. So that's how I learned to search by myself because there were a couple websites where I was getting like emails from this website, but they weren't giving me a full list. And I really wanted to be able to find a full list of books that were free that day. E-reader IQ sometimes helps, but if the books aren't specifically designated as, you know, like they don't always show up, like for real, like I use e-reader IQ, but then when I go and check books that are zero dollars, I find hundreds more than what that app showed me. So this is how you do it yourself. Um, I hope the screenshot, make sure you pause and see, but it's honestly way simpler than it sounds. Like you just do advanced search, whatever kind of book you're looking for. Obviously I'm looking for romance. I put romance in and search low to high, and then you just gotta be patient. You're scrolling through um, and make sure that it says that it's zero dollars. You know, when you click on the book, cause what I'll do is I'll go through it and I will right click, open in a new tab and I'll pick like, 50 of them and then I'll go back through and like read what they're about and decide if I want to buy it or not because I don't buy every single one that's zero dollars but that's how you can search for yourself there you go what TV shows do you watch well currently I'm only watching one TV show and it's called prodigal son and I think it's on NBC or Fox I'm not sure um, and that is the only show I've tried to watch during quarantine. I used to watch a lot of doctor shows. I watched The Resident, The Good Doctor, and Grey's Anatomy. I can't watch them in a post-COVID world because too many of the cases were about COVID and I just don't want to watch it. Like, I don't want to watch it. I'd rather see, you know, a pregnant mom getting <laughs> cancer on the episode than COVID stuff because I just don't want to. So that cut off a lot of my things. Same with, I used to watch, I've watched SVU since I was seven years old and just too much of it they try to do rip from the headline stuff for that and again it gets too political and too frustrating for me to watch it even though I am a huge advocate I completely support um, Mariska Herdegay her uh, her charity is one of my favorite charities to donate to but I don't like how it gets put in the media and how some situations get twisted for TV I'm just not a fan of making drama. Whereas before I feel like there was so many things about um, sexual abuse and those things that were unknown and that's what made that TV show so powerful. And now it's more about these really weird twisted political views that it gets into instead of just like the empowerment of like a woman standing up to her rapist or someone who did this to her. That's what I loved about that show. And now it's just too, it's too much for me. Um, but also I love Longmire and I love Yellowstone. Yellowstone is one that I am, it's in its off season, but there's going to be one more season of that show and I freaking love it. Um, obviously I love Outlander. If you didn't know that, <laughs> don't know what's wrong with you. Um, those are my main, I mean, I can even just, there's all my Outlanders right there. So yeah, those are my favorites. What do you do for work? I had a lot of people ask this. You're so sweet. And some of you know I recently got a new job. Um, I just started my second month today. <laughs> um, and currently right now I work for a small marketing and sales company. We're going through some transitions right now, working on getting some new clients, which has been a little bit stressful, but it's also been kind of exciting because I really am getting to be creative in ways that I never thought that I would get to do. So yeah, that's been great. I'm losing the light. We're going to turn just a little bit. There we go. I'm chasing the light. So I have to talk fast. Um, and I am an executive, executive administrative assistant which basically means a secretary for a business of three people, but I love it. Um, and for the past month, I was able to listen to a lot of audiobooks at work. Like I was doing it constantly right now. We're in a really busy period. So I've had to like, like today, I just couldn't listen cause I really had to focus on some reports that I was doing, but I was like, but anyway, I've been really blessed with that. If you'd only read three books for the rest of your life, what would they be? This is really like, you're cute, 
but I'm not going to answer this question <laughs> because why would I only have to read three books for the rest of my life? Like, did they all burn or what? There's actually a lot of questions like this. And I was like, you sick sadist. Like, why would you do that to me? So not going to answer that. <laughs> How do you pay attention to audiobooks while doing other things? Um, it all depends. It depends on the book. And like, I don't have a way to train you to do this, unfortunately. Um, I used to think I couldn't do anything while I did it, but it just depends. Like, as I just said, if I'm doing a high level of work, I can't listen into it. I can't. But my work isn't constantly doing stuff all day. I think that's where, you know, people miss that. I'm not listening while I'm doing other things. It's just that my job, I'm not constantly doing things. So I can have an earbud in while I'm waiting for the phone to ring next. And then I just hit pause and pop on my headset. Like, so I think there's a misconception that I am doing lots of things while I'm listening. It's because my job, I'm not always constantly doing something. If my attention is fully needed, I can't be listening at the same time because fully multitasking doesn't actually exist. Like there are tons of studies done on this. You can be very quick at switching, which is what I am able to do, but I can't fully do that. Obviously while I'm like cleaning or cooking or, you know, doing other things like driving, I can fully focus on a story and do the thing. But that's because usually the other thing that I'm doing is like a built in to my bones type of thing, you know, like driving or whatever. How do you read so much? I think I've made a whole video on this before. Um, really, it has to do with audiobooks. Um, always having a book on my phone. Like, I just was at, held up at the FedEx store. I was just held up at the FedEx store for like 20 minutes. I have books on my phone. So while I was sitting in the chair waiting for my turn, I was reading a book. Um, I've always done that. I've done that like in class. I always had my book sitting on my desk, like under my pencil case. And whenever the teacher wasn't looking, I would read just a little bit of it. You know, um, I always have an audiobook going. I'm usually double dipping. I'm usually have the book on my, like on my Kindle or a physical book and an audiobook. So I'm either listening to it in the car and then when I get home, I can read on my book. It's, I feel like Brie recently made a video about this and she did a really great job of saying like it's priorities. Like I read so much because I don't do much else. I don't watch much TV anymore. I don't have a lot of stuff still going with my friends. Like I work out, I work and I read. And even while I'm working out and working, I can read sometimes while I'm doing that. So that's why I read so much. If you were able to devote 18 out of the 24 hours a day to reading, you would read as much as I do too. Like it's just the truth. Also, I'm closer to like a speed reader now. And my audiobook reading speed is up to like 1.75. So, you know, a eight hour book only takes me like five hours, you know? So it's all about those little things that you do. This is something that like it's taken training over time, you know? And now I read through audio, I read through books really fast. It's just how it goes. The less I like the book, the faster that I read it usually because I start skimming. You know, I don't, a book that gets my full attention, I read slow. That's truth. That is truth. If there's a book by a favorite author, I clear the schedule and just soak it up. Like I did that with um, A Court of Silver Flames. Like that book, it was 700 pages, but I can read a 700 page book pretty quickly. I let that one take me a long time because I just soaked it up. I wasn't in a rush. I wanted every word on the page. So yeah. Um, do you have any new favorite authors? <sighs> Elizabeth Hoyt is going to be a favorite. I've read three of her books so far and I loved all of them. Um, Kennedy Ryan's probably going to be a favorite, man. I can't believe I'm saying that because I did not think it would be true. And I just read the Grip Trilogy. I just did it. And it was amazing. And I want to read her other stuff too. Even though before I have like drugged my feet, I really want to read them now. I really want to. Are there any new tropes that you like? Hmm. I don't know what's considered new. So... I think for the past year, one of my new favorites, because there are some that I've just always liked them, but something that's a, well, this might even be new, and I don't know if this fits in a trope, but
but recently I've read a lot of good romances that had kids in them and that's a trope that I hate like it's usually on my I hate list and I'm finding that when it's done well that that's actually a favorite of mine because I love parents and I love watching like single dads or single moms um, and then I also love older woman younger man which is a newer thing for me because I used to always like age gaps where the guy was the oldest but like I'm even reading I'm reading waiting for a Scott like you and I'm just like I love it I love she's in her 40s he's in his like 20s and I love it will you do merch in the future I don't know I don't know I feel like it's a lot of work to set up merch that's good quality and amazing and I think my channel is still too small where I would be like even selling any of it. Um, I've made myself my first piece of merch like I ordered a travel mug that like had my name um, screen not screen printed laser printed onto it but I don't know it depends on how many people are actually interested because I feel like I mean I love what my name is like I've loved from the very beginning when I thought of the book refuge. I think it does lend itself to some cool like merch ideas um, like I love the idea of just like a fortress with like someone inside reading with like a book light or something um, but I don't know it's a lot of work to do that well um, and then to actually have people buy it I don't know like I feel like I feel like that's a goal for when I reach like 20k or something because then it's like you have enough people that even if a small amount buy your merch, that it works. So maybe someday. Um, do you plan to write your own novel? I do not. I do not plan to. I have made a couple half-hearted attempts many years ago. Like when I was back in high school, um, me and my bestie, we would sometimes work on different things and we'd come up with ideas. But currently in my life, I would much rather read other people's well-done attempts than to try to fuddle through my own and then to make something that gets to be critiqued by other people. Because I know that it is a fucking bitch to put your heart and soul into a project and then have people like me say, oh, it just didn't quite work for me. Like, yeah, no, no. I would, I don't want to go through that because people, I even got one of the comments someone had given me, which it's not on my list, but they said something about how are you so confident and stuff. And it's like, it's all, it's not a front. Like I'm pretty confident. I just don't give a fuck. When you're someone who was bullied most of your life, when you're overweight, tall, you know, not that good looking person, you just have to deal with it. And like, I'm not saying those things as disparages thing. There's all body types. I find myself beautiful. I'm really proud of myself of a lot of changes I've made to be healthier. This body works hard for me. She's a hard working bitch. But I don't fucking care if someone else thinks I'm sexy. I think that I'm sexy and it's fine. And so, um, but let's look at that tangent. But that doesn't mean that making, because once you make a book and you put it out there, like it's out there and people can say shit. And I do not have enough self-restraint to not try to see what they've said about me. And then we would all just be in tears. It'd be horrible. So no. What are your favorite videos to film? I love doing my weekly wrap ups. They're the best video that I ever decided to make because I get to talk in full detail about the books that I've read that week. And that's my favorite thing to do. Absolutely love it. Um, there are a video that took a long time to like gain steam, but they're my favorite ones to do, even though they're the longest ones to wrap up and everything. But I love just getting to share with you guys the books that I read that week and talk about every book that I read. Whereas when I used to do monthly wrap ups or even bi monthly wrap ups, I wasn't able to fully talk about books the way that I wanted to. What are your favorite booktube videos to watch? Um, I love recommendation videos. I just do. I also love watching my friends vlogs because I love spending time with them. Like I say this in there's all the time. I love watching Jessen and Crystal and Avery when they do a vlog because it just feels like I get to spend an hour of my day with them. Um, and that is so special to me because some of the relationships I've built on this platform, they're very real to me. Um, and they're people that I think about often and cherish that relationship and so I like their vlogs because it feels like I'm spending time and like talking about a book with them right um but I don't like to watch that for the booktube community as a whole because 
I don't know those people the same way. And so it doesn't feel the same to me. Um, so I like recommendation videos because I like when there's a trope that we all love and seeing what other people put into that category, especially if it's someone who's actually done the work and they haven't just put the same 10 books in their list that everybody else has for enemies to lovers. That's really fun for me. Um, do you have friends outside of booktube who love books as much as you do? I have one friend. Her name is Shauna. That's the friend that I'll refer to sometimes, my childhood friend. We've been reading together since we were in eighth grade. We would share our books back and forth. She would go to her library in the town she lived and I would go to the one that I would read. And so we would check out 10 books each and then we'd switch them with each other and then take them back to our own libraries. So I would get a read because her library had like a bigger reach than mine did. Um, and so we would like get, because we quickly read our way through our library at our small town. Um, and we liked sexier books and there weren't really those in the high school library. Um, so first Shauna's mom would check some of them out and she would get them from her grandma, I think. Her grandma had some Harlequins we had read way back. Um, and then I've shared this before, like my first historical romance that I really remember reading reading was from one of my teachers in high school and her and I we were like did you read the scenes in that book it's so sexy look at the step back oh my god um one of the other first books we read was fantasy lover by by Christine Feehan but anyway that's my bestie I still we text multiple times a week just being like did you read this one or she'd be like did you read this one tell me what you think blah um and it's so much fun to have that person who's like real in my life. And we just had a chat the other day on the phone, like I haven't talked to her and all we did was talk about books the whole time. <laughs> Didn't talk about her children with her at all, just talked about books. So yes, but my other friends, pretty much every book my other friends have read is because I recommended it and they haven't read many. Like back in high school, my friends read more of my books because we had like designated reading time and I would help people find books. My teacher used to send me to the library with a couple kids to like help them pick out books. I would do that. Do you ever take a break from reading? I don't because to me reading isn't something I need a break from. It is a part of my life. It is something that I love. Um, sure there'll be like a day where I don't read because I have stuff going on and but there has not been like just look at my Kindle history guys. There has not been a single day <laughs> unless I was really ill or someone died or I was really, really busy that I've not had a book within my grasp, either physically or since I've had a Kindle app on my phone, I haven't gone, it's years, probably since I was 15, I have not went a day without reading. It's not something I need a break from, it's something I enjoy. If I needed a break from it, I've had a concussion and have amnesia because I don't ever want a break from a book. Sometimes it's hard to settle on a book I want to be reading, but I always want to be reading. It's what I think about all the time, which is why I love book too. Um, how do you choose what to read next? Yeah, good question. This is difficult. Um, I do like the spinner wheel. One of the, um, a couple of my friends have really loved the spinner wheels. I'm glad they use them too. I originally like got the spinner wheel because I feel like the spinner wheel helps you decide what you really want. Um, so sometimes when I do the spinner wheel, I'll put a few books that I can't decide between them and I'll spin the wheel and then I won't necessarily do what the spinner wheel picks because I'll be like, Ooh, I didn't actually want to read that one. And so it's like the spinner wheel does two things. It either helps you pick a book if you don't, if you're honestly like, yeah, I want to read this one or it helps you know what you really want because when it lands on that one, you're kind of like, Oh, I don't want to read that. So. Also, I mean, I have my TBR. Usually when I finish a book, what I do is I'm like, okay, is this in a series? Do I want to read the next one? Yes or no? If I do, good. Um, okay, what's on my TBR still for this month? Do I want to read something from there? I do. Okay, cool. Do it. Or am I just like, I want to just grab something random out of my Kindle. Okay. Like I don't stick strictly to a TBR. I never have. Like I never, ever have. I completely just like to go where I like to go. So that's why being in book clubs and having those things, I need to be really strategic. It's why I love running my own book club with Crystal because we're picking books we really want to read. And so, um, but even then within that, I try to give myself lots of time to read a book that's assigned so that I can go through that moodiness. Because if I know that I wanted to read it at one point, usually I'm still going to want to read it by the time it's time to read it. I just need to give myself the time. But I... Yeah, spinner wheels help. 
drawing things out of a hat helps just like browsing through my Kindle app because I have hundreds of books on there. Be like, what do I want to read? Do I want to read the oldest book that I have? Let's look and see what that is. Like, but also something that I do do, and it's funny because people do it as like try a chapter challenge, but I've kind of always done that. It's why sometimes you'll notice on my Goodreads that it says I'm reading like eight books at once. And that's because Kindle, I like to track what I'm reading from Kindle to Goodreads, but sometimes I'll be trying a bunch of books and then they'll all show that they're open and then I only end up reading one of those books. I naturally will do a try a chapter challenge, but I don't call it that. It's just I read the first few pages of a bunch of books and decide which one grabs me. But it's all about keeping yourself reading. Um, what would your perfect dream library look like? Very comfy couch and just all the beautiful books around me. That's it. I'm a simple, simple bitch. I don't want them too high because I can't see them up there. I just, I want them all over the place. What's one book everyone should read this year? Whoa. I mean, I'm going to say the Grip Trilogy. So, but I'm going to say the third one because that was the best one. So I think you should read Still by Kennedy Ryan. But to read Still, you need to read Flow and Grip first. So there you go. I just did it. I said it. That's the one. You need to read it. It's great. Um, what inspired you to start your channel? Yeah, I haven't answered this in a long time. So I had been watching BookTube for probably about a year. Um, it was really great because it really kickstarted my reading. Like I said, I'm always reading books. I always have. But I used to like take longer to do it because I had more things going on. So I would just, I wouldn't read as constantly as I do now, but I, I would read every day, but usually it would be like before bed and at my lunchtime at work. Like those would be the times that I could read. Um, and at that time I had been reading through the Outlander series for the first time and those were taking me a really long time to get through. Um, but I, I got really inspired to do it by Murphy Napier. And I've shared this before and we used to be really close friends. I don't hold any ill will for this. Her channel went in a totally different direction. I used to read more fantasy and so we were a lot closer, like we were really close friends back then. Um, but I found some of her old videos because I had just read the Shadow and Bone trilogy for the first time um, in 2018, right? Because I said when my channel started. And she had done this review, she did a spoiler review where she just sat down and talked through all her favorite parts. And so I'd been watching booktube and I'd seen only like big booktubers, you know, who I'd only been watching like the big three of, of fantasy YA booktube, right? Um, and then Murphy at the time, she'd only had like 8,000 subscribers when I found her. You know, now she has 300,000 you know, which is amazing. And like, she's such a sweet human. She deserves it so much. She really does. But I just love that she was a mom and she was reading and she was reading books at the time that like I really liked. And I just started watching her. And then I was like, man, if she can sit down in front of her bookcase and talk about the books she's doing, I can do it too. So I looked up how I could do it with my phone because I wasn't going to buy any equipment and I wasn't going to learn how to edit anything. And so everything I do, as I've said many times, there's a video where I talk more in depth about this. I use my phone. I sometimes use a microphone. Most of the time I don't because the microphone on my phone is fine. And I edit using an app on my phone called Kindmaster. And I do everything you see for the 600 plus videos I've done, I've used a phone for. And it's been great. And... So now that I'm finally starting to like make some money doing it, I don't have thousands of dollars sunk into this production. I've spent maybe a couple hundred bucks over the years on like stands and lights and microphones and that's it. So there you go. Um, what genre or subgenre would you like to read more of? I'd like to find some more romantic suspense because I do, I do enjoy some of that. The thing is, is that I need there to be as much romance as there is suspense. And I've read a few of those, like Jodie Slaughter has one. Um, she's the only one that popped right into my head, but I know I've read more. Um, I would like to read more of those. Um, I feel like some mafia can be romantic suspense, ones that actually have like plot going on with the mafia stuff. So I would definitely read some more of that. I just, again, I really want the romance 
to be as important as that. Um, an author I used to read back before I was fully, fo I used to read Alison Brennan and she had some really dark stories and I really think that she was kind of the inception of me liking darker romance stuff. She had some pretty scary villains in some of her books and some really sexy times too. Very interesting. All right, second page. Any hobbies outside of reading? Not really. Like I don't know what else to say. I don't. I love to play board games, but COVID kind of put the kibosh on that. And then my friends, we haven't really rebuilt our community because a lot of them have had babies since then. And so now trying to play a game is like wrangling a three ring circus while you're trying to play. You got kids trying to grab stuff and that's bad for them. And it's a whole thing. Will you ever do a video about books you read before booktube? Um, not really. It was just some like YA. It was a lot of YA fantasy and fantasy. And the ones that are important to me, I do still talk about like Catherine Coulter, Julia Quinn, um, Sarah J. Mass. Like I still read all those authors now. Um, Jay Kristoff, um, Marissa Meyer. I still talk about those books. I try to incorporate them still. So I don't think I'll make a video separate to it because they just come up as they come up. Um, which book on your shelf is your most prized possession? That's, that's actually easy. Um, this was a Christmas present from my big sis on booktube and it is my signed copy of the Duke and I. Um, Julia Quinn signed it to me and then she posted it on Instagram and I cried horribly. So this book is my most prized possession. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a hard one and then I remembered this. So how do you feel about online dating? I think it's fine. I think it's how a lot of people meet these days. Um, are there any romance novels you definitely won't read? The only ones that I can think of is like, um, I won't read Seven Rue anymore, so I won't be reading her. Um, also books that think they're romance, but aren't romance. I won't read those. So they're not really romance, but books that get like marketed as romance that aren't. Um, do you have any tattoos? Yes, I have four. I have It Is Well. This was actually my newest tattoo. Um, there's actually a video of when I got it that's on here at some point. Um, this is my grandmother's favorite hymn. My grandmother died in 2017, I believe. Um, it Is Well With My Soul was my grandma's favorite hymn. Um, there are some verses in that hymn that have gotten me through some really tough days. Um, I have it is well things like kind of all over my apartment. They show up sometimes. So I have that one. I have a cross. This was my second tattoo that I got. I have a tattoo that says forgiven. This was the first one that I got when I turned 18. And then I have a tattoo. This one's hard to show. <laughs> it says, it says Lumos and then it says John one five. So, um, I mean, she gets a lot of flack now, but what Harry Potter has done for me will always stand apart and I have it tattooed on my skin and I'm not getting it removed. But John 1 5, if you are a Christian or someone who's read the Bible, John 1 5 says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness could not overcome it. And then Lumos is the spell for light and so it has a little wand shooting out sparks. And so that's kind of a mental health quote for me. I don't struggle all the time, but I had went through some pretty dark times after like um, just, just things. We all go through things. And so this tattoo reminds me to, um, you know, there's also that quote by Dumbledore, if you just remember to turn on a light. Um, and so I really love Lumos for that. And I just felt like John 1, 5 really described it. So those are the four tattoos that I have. And another question was, were there more tattoos you'd like to get? And the answer is yes. There's one that I was planning to get right before COVID happened. Um, and now it's just not fiscally responsible to get it for me because it's going to be the biggest one that I've had. I'm planning to get kind of a, um, on my left calf, 
all the way down the back, there is, I'll see if I can find a, the picture that I use for it, um, is this lion who's like walking forward. Um, and I really want to get that. Um, because he's my protector and I really love the symbol of the lion and what it means. Um, the lion of Judah from the Bible as well as, I mean, I'm a Gryffindor again, I'm not going to stop. And there's a verse in the Bible again that says, um, be strong and courageous. And I want that like in script underneath it. So, um, that one is to kind of commemorate like my health journey and my weight loss and that I'm fierce as a lioness and I'm a protector and I'm strong and brave and all those things. Um, and that's going to be, um, like the picture shows with some of those like details worked through it. And it was something I was working on with my tattoo artist and then, um, that tattoo artist moved as well as COVID happened. And so that's my like dream tattoo someday um, to be, it'll be the biggest piece I have. Cause as you see, I mostly have like lettering and small things and I've got them in places where it didn't hurt that much. And so that one, I mean, it's also on a meteor part, but it's a big one with a lot of detail. And so it may be some time before I get that one. Um, and then we'll end with this question because it's great. What is it about reading that you love the most? There's a couple things. Um, one, I love to believe in a happily ever after. That's why I read romance. Um, whatever emotions I go through on the way to something, whatever the journey is, I love knowing that there's a happily ever after at the end of it. Um, I also love talking about books. It's why I have a YouTube channel. It's why I've made so many friends with you guys. I love having opinions and even about the smallest little nerdy things to big differing opinions about things that sometimes frustrate us. But I just, I love that. I love it so much being able to, um, discuss that with friends and yeah, to have friends all over the world is amazing. You all mean so much to me. Um, getting the chance to talk with you guys and, be friends and even if we never meet that you spend your time watching me it means something to me so thank you all for joining me for this um i hope you do check out the any play app if you love audiobooks and like i said i'm not getting any kickback for this all that i got out of it is like i do have a couple free months because they gave that to me for this but like i'm not getting any kickback if you guys like use a link or anything i'm just including the link so you can go check it out but I highly recommend it if you love audiobooks because it's kind of blowing my mind right now. Like, it's just doing it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video um, and being on this crazy journey with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.